Well, all I can tell you is that my slant is different than anybody else's, so I can't Absolutely, say yeah, that I'm yeah. a part. I'm not a part of the tobacco control movement, but I help build it. Now, how do you define that to people? You know, all I can say is that I'm sorry I got involved, obviously, because the friends who I thought were going to help make a difference and raise the level of awareness proportionate to the havoc that it wreaks, you know, are no longer my friends by their choice. I didn't do anything different. I haven't done a damn thing different than I did since 1989 when Peter Jennings and Harry Smith and I went on CBS television and told my story, and I've said the same thing for the last 21 years. So, I mean, how, how do I get my story out there? Well, I guess unless somebody kidnaps me, Chris, you know, and have John Grisham write a story about me, you know, you know John Grisham? Of course, yeah, yeah. Well, John, I am really, if you stop and think, I am really, you know, somebody like John Grisham's next Mitch McDeer or Rudy Baylor or Jake Durant or, you know, Nicholas Easter. These are the characters in his books, you know, that I think if he had kept the movie Runaway Jury, you know, uh, surrounding the uh, tobacco company, we would have had a lot of different attitudes towards it. But he changed it in the movie from the... Uh, tobacco lobby to the gun lobby. I don't know if you're aware of that. And you have to ask yourself a question. Well, why would he change it? How much pressure did he get to now do a movie that was on a, on a successful best-selling book about the tobacco industry? Then when it became a movie, they changed the whole villain. <laughs> you know, yeah, and you've and you got to ask yourself a question. Why? Why would he allow that to be changed? You know, I mean, it's like writing the book Titanic and the Titanic never sank. You know, let's tell a different story. Well, the truth of the matter is there's so much pressure on your end, on my end, on, on both sides of the fence with tobacco, but they're in cahoots together, Chris. I'm telling you that. Right. And I'm, avail I'm available to talk to you a hundred times over this, you know, and, and clarify any questions that you have. And I know my story is not scientific or medical, or, but it's, it's a moral thing with me. It always has been a moral thing. It has been about kids. And I think, honestly, if you keep it about kids in my particular perspective, that, you know, people won't tear me down. That's why nobody's been able to tear me down. They just stopped using me because they don't, they're afraid of what I'm going to say. You know, being politically insensitive is what I'm known for. You know, telling the truth when I do a keynote speech and I mention a governor who's been on the take in most cases by the tobacco lobby or the governor is now a former tobacco lobbyist and I go to that state and I mention their name, of course they're not going to want me back because it means somebody has to be accountable for bringing me in. And they're afraid of losing their job if it's in a school. So I try to pussyfoot around as much as I can until I get my foot in the door, and then I open my mouth, and then what comes out, uh, I can't control it anymore. You know, but to, to me, tobacco control, trying to understand it, is like being in a foreign country where nobody's speaking English. You know, I don't understand them. I don't. I can't even guess as to why they've taken this approach in the last 15 years when they had such an opportunity to create such a wonderful, wonderful health issue rather than a rights issue and uh, hateful, arrogant uh, vindictiveness that, that I think will never, ever put tobacco control back on the map in a favorable favorable light, even for people like me. Right, right. And I think, as you said today, you know, I think probably money and extremism has got a lot to do with it. But um, uh -huh. as you say, you, you feel you're on the losing side, um, and perhaps you are. I hope, I hope someday that John Grisham writes your story. For the time being, it you have to settle for me. Okay. Um, and thank you very much for talking to me. And uh, we'll we'll speak again. My pleasure, Chris. And anything I can do in the future, feel free to reach me. Okay. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers.